Today at shopdap.com, we're going to be going over Haldex all-wheel drive systems. All right, so before we talk into specifics about how Dex works, just a brief overview for anybody who's not familiar with how Dex or how how Dex is different from uh, standard all-wheel drive systems. So in many Audi models and some earlier VW models, they would have all-wheel drive systems and the difference would be those all-wheel drive systems use full-time all-wheel drive, which means all four wheels are driving all the time. They have the ability to, uh, based on those systems, they're uh, torsion-based systems, they have the ability to, to change the power given to each axle, but uh, they are full-time all-wheel drive. Haldex is not a full-time all-wheel drive system. It is essentially a front-wheel drive car that has the ability to use rear, rear wheels as well to create the all-wheel drive system. Benefit to this, obviously, on one hand, the having a front-wheel drive setup on just day-to-day -day use is much better for fuel consumption. There's no need to be driving the rear wheels of the vehicle while you're on the highway, which obviously is a consist, can significant uh, more amount of fuel used than what you would find on just a traditional front-wheel drive setup. Uh, there are definitely performance detractions from a Haldex setup, especially the earlier versions that uh, used a different system that were much more reactive than proactive, uh, which means they essentially would only react when they would find wheel slippage occurring, whereas the current gens use uh, the, have the ability to actually use the conditions of the vehicle because they have a lot more inputs from the driver uh, to sense slippage potentially before they even happen. Okay, so let's go over a brief overview of some of the common VW and Audi models found with Haldex. Uh, most Audi models would use a, a traditional style all-wheel drive with the exception of the Audi models that share platforms with Volkswagen, they would generally have Haldex, which would include the Audi A3, the Audi S3, and the Audi TT all use uh, the traditional Haldex uh, setup that we would find that we're talking about today. When we move over to the VW side, the first Haldex US model VW that came with that was the Mark IV R32, then the Mark V R32, the Tiguan, the Mark VI Golf R, uh, the CCs use a Haldex system. Unlike older Passats that had all-wheel drive, they had a uh, Torsen style. And then obviously the Mark VII Golf R also uses the fifth gen of the Haldex, which is the most current version available at this time. I'll put a link to uh, all the common Haldex service parts because they do require servicing uh, right here. You can check that out. And something to be aware of, the current model Haldex systems, because they're different, and we're gonna get onto that in a second, uh, do not use filters, much like the earlier uh, Gen 1, Gen 2 versions. They had a serviceable filter and a special tool required to service that um, when actually taking care of your maintenance interval for those models. So if we take a look here, we have our engine transmission in the front with our differential. That also has a drive shaft that runs to the rear differential. Now the Haldex system is all mounted on the rear differential where you'll find the pump and the Haldex clutch assembly. Now the Haldex clutch is actually what gives the rear differential the ability to connect and disconnect based on the demand of the vehicle. So what would happen is in a situation where you were to have slipping, it would, the vehicle would electronically send a signal back for the axle to actually engage, it would then engage that clutch, sending the wheels in the rear turning. Now that we've gone through a brief overview of how Haldex works, let's talk about how it's changed over the generations. As mentioned earlier, the early versions of Haldex were much more basic and didn't have as much control as the current ones do, or really didn't actuate and activate when they necessarily needed to, they were just reacting to seeing wheels slipping. So they would get a signal from wheel speed sensors saying one of the wheels is off. It would then determine that they needed to actuate the rear differential and then it would activate Haldex and obviously off you go. Uh, I also assume that some, there are some scenarios, for example, launching that would create a less than uh, ideal situation because that pump was not turning fast enough to give you the pressure needed, uh, which is why the current versions have a much better setup for that. So let's take a look at the current versions. Gen 4 and Gen 5 Haldex are, are much better and very similar. They'll have a few slight differences, but we're gonna talk mostly about Gen 4 and then uh, Gen 5, we're gonna just have a brief overview of that. So 
Gen 4, if we take a look at this flow chart here, this shows how the fluid actually moves through the system. So if you look, the main difference you find here that in Gen 4 systems, they actually use an electronic pump. That's true for Gen 4 and Gen 5. Haldex systems use an electronic pump that's constantly running. As soon as your engine starts, your, that electronic pump is running full time, nonstop, making maximum pressure. So if you take a look here, that M at the bottom is the motor. That's the actual electronic pump that actually pumps the fluid and creates the pressure required for this. And obviously at the bottom is the oil reservoir. If you take a look at how the oil flows upwards, up straight up is going to be your Haldex clutch control valve on the right end to N373. And that actually controls the flow of oil to the actual uh, Haldex clutch assembly itself. That will be what actually engages and disengages that clutch when it's needed. So if you take a look how it functions, as the oil goes up, there is uh, 435 PSI or 30 bar on the Gen 4 systems. And that accumulator on the left-hand side, what happens is as the Haldex clutch control valve N2, N373 on the top right is closed completely, meaning you're basically in front wheel drive mode, the pressure will continue to rise and be at 435. And then once it gets over that, that accumulator on the left will then allow the fluid to bypass in back into the oil reservoir, maintaining that 435 PSI in that line between the pump and that Haldex clutch control valve at all times. What that means is that you actually have all that pressure ready to go as soon as you need it. So in those systems, all they have to do is open that actuator, send the fluid over to the actual clutch assembly, and then it's already ready to go and you can engage your rear differential immediately. So as we look at this N373 valve, it actually controls the variable amount of fluid running to that Haldex clutch itself. This is how it determines how much of the percentage of power actually runs to the rear wheels. So it obviously varies the pressure. Lower pressure means less power. The 100% all pressure would be uh, obviously the maximum power you can send to those rear wheels. On the Gen 5 systems found in the Mark 7, the maximum amount of rear wheel power is 50%. So 50-50 split of all wheel drive on the, Gen, on the Gen 5 systems, which is found in the Mark 7, as well uh, as Golf R, as well as the All Track. So now let's talk about the Gen 5. Uh, Gen 5 is obviously very similar to Gen 4. The way they control the fluid is gonna be a little bit different. They use the same electronic pump setup where it's constantly running at all times. The pressure seems to be higher. I saw 40 bar is going to be the max pressure in that system, which is 646 PSI. Um, and the way that's gonna be different is they use a variable pump assembly that controls the amount of pressure before they don't have that N373 valve. But the same general concept applies in the way the fluid pressure is applied and the way that it has that constant pressure always available and ready to be used. Now, the other variable uh, that's different in the Gen 5 systems is it is more active than the Gen 4 systems. Uh, it also uses uh, EDL, electronic differential lock, to control uh, the power to which wheel. And so what EDL does in the electronic differential lock, it doesn't actually do anything in the differentials. Um, all these Volkswagen models use uh, open differentials, which is basically what happens in an open differential. And you can check out more information about differentials in our Mark V build. We did a limited slip differential where we talked more in detail about that, which I will link to here where you can check that out. But essentially open differentials, when they function, when one wheel slips, it actually diverts all the power in that way because the power follows the path of least resistance on open differentials. So what Volkswagen did for the Gen 5 systems to control that is when you have slipping, it would then apply the brakes on that wheel to then send the power to the other wheel. So this essentially creates a scenario where it's a semi-limited slip differential setup to where it uses applying the brakes through the ABS, EDL and ABS system to then divert the power to the wheel that doesn't have traction. Uh, that obviously is a much better system as well as Gen 5s are proactive in the way that they're using more driver inputs. Uh, they're looking at things like steering angle sensor, things like uh, throttle position, engine speed, uh, and a bunch of other 
variables as well. So they're going to be proactive and potentially catch issues before they even happen. And I suspect that there's some setup during sport mode that, that actually uh, on the cars that have all wheel drive actually changes the dynamic of what they're looking for and, and changes how the all wheel drive system interacts with the vehicle. Thank you so much for watching our How Haldex Systems Work on VW and Audi models. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.